I decided to make the chop bot to help me do high quality, uniformly straight plasma cuts and steel plate. I have a very nice little Hobart 250CI plasma cutter, which has an integrated compressor and runs off 110 volts. This makes it self-contained and very portable, but it requires a very slow speed of around 3 inches per minute when cutting to its max rated capacity of quarter inch steel. I just don't have a very steady hand, and even when using a guide to draw the torch along, my cuts were still really ragged. Because I'm a hobbyist and not a production shop, slow cutting speed's not a problem for me. I can afford to wait two minutes for a Hobart to cut a piece of steel plate as opposed to doing it in 15 seconds with a much larger, more expensive, and less portable unit. I have several projects coming up that require lots of clean cuts and pieces of quarter inch plate, so this is the perfect time to make this tool. The backbone of this unit consists of a four foot long, 40 millimeter square aluminum extrusion and a neat little linear bearing with Teflon sliders that I already had on hand from a different project from years ago. My lead screw is nothing fancy. It's just a piece of half by 13 all thread rod from the hardware store. Because the all thread measures about 12.2 millimeters outside diameter, I decided to buy a couple of 12 millimeter bearing blocks from Amazon to support the ends of the all thread. I took the all thread over to the lathe and I spun it while sanding it with some emery cloth to bring it down to 12 millimeter. The beauty about this method is that you don't have to have a lathe to resize something like all thread and still make it concentric. You can chuck it up in a regular drill and support it like between a couple of pieces of wood and still sand it down and make it nice and concentric. I'm driving the linear bearing with two half inch nuts spot welded to a 5 16 socket head cap screw. The socket head cap screw just floats in one of the holes in the linear bearing so that it doesn't bind as the bearing is traveling along the track. I wanted to use two nuts so that I had more thread engagement to make the threads last longer. Up to this point, I don't really have a lot of cutting and fabrication time. Before I start cutting into good parts and mounting things permanently, I decided to just do a quick mock-up on the bench to make sure that my calculations were right for the travel speeds for the linear bearing. I put the coupler on the end of the lead screw and then the other coupler on the motor, used cable ties to hold the motor onto the rail and then temporarily wired the speed controller to the power supply and then the motor to the speed controller. Running at full speed in both directions of travel, I ended up with an actual speed of 14 inches per minute. This validated my earlier calculations, so now it's okay to go ahead and start actually cutting holes in my enclosure and mounting all the components. My method of transferring the motor bolt pattern onto the enclosure is to just take a piece of cardstock, put it down over the mounting end of the motor, and using a punch, locate all the holes in the motor, and then transferring that pattern to the enclosure so I can drill the holes in the right places. Whenever possible, I like using these computer power supply style power inlets for my projects. They're inexpensive and they use a standard cord, so if the cord gets damaged, you can just replace it with any of your spare cords lying around that would work for any computer monitor or any computer. The power inlet has clipped corners at the top, so as you can see from the following video, I had to drill at the corners and then use a Dremel and a file to cut out the hole to fit.
The next hole is a standard panel mount quarter inch microphone jack connector. I wanted a simple interconnect between the plasma cutter itself and the control panel on the chop pot so I could turn the plasma torch on at the start of a cut and off when the cut completed. Microphone jacks have nice, big, robust contacts. They're readily available and they're inexpensive, so I figured that would be a perfect cable to use for my interconnect. The microphone jack connector will wire into a standard single pole, single throw toggle switch. This switch is going to be used to turn the plasma torch on and off. The speed controller comes with a built-in direction switch and both the direction switch and the potentiometer for the speed controller, which is mounted to the control board for the speed controller, mount in the lid. Final wiring consists of soldering the wires to the microphone jack, connecting those wires to the toggle switch, and then connecting power wires from the power supply up to the speed controller.
the lid gets fastened down and then the last thing that I did was I took an ohm meter and I checked the contacts on the microphone cable to make sure that everything was hooked up right and that my switch had continuity. Part one of this project is going to end with complete assembly of the electronics box mounted to the rail, aligning the couplers up so I could do a final motion test of the linear bearing. Everything lines up really nice and the bearing slides along the entire length of the rail without binding at all. In the part two video of this project I'll show you how I make the torch mounting clamp and how I do the interconnect between the control box on the chop bot and on the plasma cutter itself. And then at the end of part two, if everything goes like I hope it will, you'll see the chop bot actually cutting real live steel.